I don't think that's what they meant by booby trap. Booby trap? Didn't you see the booby? Hello, nerdlings! What up, nerdlings? So, uh, just real quick, do you nerd for, uh, pickups wherever you go. Anywhere. They could be pickups from the moon. so many little yeah. flea markets and malls on the moon. <laughs> I, tell you, I tell you what, some of our flea markets lately, it's kind of feeling like we may as well go to the moon and maybe we'd have a little better luck. Because I don't know about you, but I think I got junk. Meh. I like what I picked up. <laughs> I always like what I pick up. All right, so uh, fortunately in our area, a lot of times whenever we do go to a flea market, the flea markets that we have are usually like pretty good size. Yeah. So there are a lot of booths, but it doesn't always mean that you'll find good stuff in there. I will say I've actually been learning watching a bunch of y'all's YouTube throw in some Ozarkian don't, lingo there. Don't. <laughs> Apparently the fact that our flea markets are in buildings with booths is a rarity. Actually, yes, it it's is. starting to feel like we have like the best kind of flea markets because everybody else's is like what we consider swap meets, just like a garage sale outside. It's very strange to see a lot of uh, other flea markets or thrifting trips. Be yeah. Outside. However, I will say you guys definitely have a one up on us because our flea markets, they have various booths, so various sectioned off areas, and people just put their stuff in there and then they sell it mm -hmm. but the seller is almost never on yeah, hand and they don't negotiate so yeah you guys can make awesome deals we're stuck with whatever the sticker price is i also think that everybody else finds better stuff than we do <laughs> so uh that being said that's, that's true so some of the the junk that i picked up uh just real quick I did find a copy of Jason X on VHS. It's not junk, man. Well, Jason X was junk. Back in the day, I used to have all of the uh, Jason Friday the 13th movies on VHS, and I thought it'd be fun to kind of pick them up as I see them, but I never see them. I was going to say something. When we found this, we did make that note. We never see Jason or Friday the 13th movies on VHS. And don't get me wrong, there are a plethora of VHSs in our area. Yes. Like, it's just an overabundance. Every time you go to a flea market, there's always a booth with at least 100. And yeah, we never <laughs> come across them. Now, uh, I did find this. It's a Mortal Kombat, God. the animated video. and The graphics <laughs> on the back of this are just... Awful. I think this was like 50 cents. It might not have even been that much. I think we got it more of a like a jokey kind of thing. Like, oh my god, this looks terrible. We have to get it. Now, it does say on the back, uh, contains a free video of the making of Mortal Kombat, the movie. See the movie now. Which means this had to have predated the movie. And, yeah. I mean, if you look at these CG graphics... I mean, this looks awful. And this thing's 60 minutes long. It also says, prepare yourself for virtual combat. So, I, I don't know if uh, if this is going to be, if we're going to be able to watch this. I, I like this, though, hidden inside. Combat codes to the Mortal Kombat 3 arcade and video games. Let's yeah. see about that. What is a very bad idea? A hanging table that just swings when you put stuff on it. Like your drink. That's not going to make a mess or anything. And then one more VHS that I picked up, and I actually picked it up for her. But she didn't know I already had it. Because <laughs> she loves the Little Mermaid. I do. But hey, even if she already has it, how can you, you know, pass up that yeah. cover? And mine is actually from when it originally came out on VHS when I was a little girl. So, uh, yeah, and it, it does have, it is the special cover. <laughs> if, if some of you our age and older know what we're talking about. 
but uh, I'm not the only one picking up movies. I picked up some movies, too. I was surprised I didn't actually have this movie. I um, really enjoy Maleficent. She's one of my favorite baddies from the Disney universe, and I was surprised I didn't have this one. I thought that this was a good movie. I know there's some people out there who didn't think it was so great. I liked it. I thought she did a good job, and I think there's actually another one coming out. I think they're finally doing a sequel. Took them long enough. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and then the other one I got was the new Terminator movie, where he's old. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you guys haven't seen this, uh, it kind of retcons a lot of stuff from the movies. And I know that there's another Terminator movie coming out that's basically kind of pulling the Halloween thing. Oh, where gosh. it's like, I think it's retconning everything except the first two. Well, those maybe. are the only good ones anyway. <laughs> but so. I have to admit, I actually thought the uh, the idea behind this was pretty clever. Yeah, it was neat, you know, going back in time and seeing Sarah Connor's time and everything. And, you know, it was kind of weird. So that was, that was fun. Now, uh, I did manage to find some games out and about. Um, nothing too special. We got a uh, Harry Potter connect. But we both like Harry Potter stuff. And it Swish might be fun to flick. swish and flick <laughs> with the connect. Yes. And I found this. Um, so this is uh, an action replay uh, Ultimate Codes Max Pack. I have no idea what this is. The action replay... I always remember it as being like a little cheat device, kind of like the Game Genie, uh -huh. the Game Shark. So I'm guessing maybe that's what this is. I'm All not I sure have to exactly. Say is look at the knockoff Mario. In the oh, I know, thing. and that's the it's best not even a part. Good Mario. <laughs> it's like they didn't even try. <laughs> so uh, this will be interesting. I always like to find little oddball stuff like this. And then I also got some Game Boy Advance some games. Baby games. Just because we don't come across them too often. But uh, I got a Banjo-Kazooie one, Sega Smash Pack, we got a Prehistoric Man, and this Dragon Ball Z Legend of Goku, or Legacy of Goku, this is actually a very fun game. It's almost like a top-down, isometric, uh, RPG style of game, and it's a lot of fun to play. Unfortunately, the booth, the flea market booth where I got these games, had lots of Game Boy Advance games, but not at good prices no. they were terrible you would find one that's going online for like 10 bucks and they had it priced for 20 and it's you know just the cart yeah they had a, all of them just tossed in a rubber made bin i went through them all though yeah, i that's a good segue into the next thing i picked up actually the whole time he went through every one of those i found myself an rl stein book that i just sat in the corner and read until he was ready to go but I have always loved Choose Your Own Adventure books, and I had no idea that R.L. Stein did Choose Your Own Adventure books. He calls them twist a plot. What a twist! And it's basically exactly like a Choose Your Own Adventure. You know, you're, you're reading along and it says, go to this page, and then go to this page. Of course, I always have to write down my choices so that I can reverse and make new choices. And, <laughs> nice. Yeah. I mean, go back the way I came. Look, I, I didn't take my hand off the page. You've seen it, Lois, right? You've seen my hand on the page. Yeah, I've seen it. I always have to know, well, what happened if I chose this way? So, and I had, like I said, I had no idea R.L. Stein did it. So it's basically like a Goosebumps book, Choose Your Own Adventure style. So, anyway, that's what I did while he was reading all those books. Going, or, yeah, not books, going, through, all going through all the games. It took forever. And hey, I love Egyptian stuff, so the mummy was a perfect. <laughs> These are butterflies. Perfect fine. Now, speaking of reading, we have learned recently that flea markets are actually a pretty good place to find some comics mm -hmm. uh, because it's a great way for us to introduce ourselves to new series because we'll see yeah. something and it'll be a buck and it's like, hey, that cover looks cool. Let's check it out. Or uh, to fill some gaps. Mm -hmm. It's been really good mm -hmm. to do that. And uh, you've been able to find a couple of your favorites. Some of the things that you've been I into did. lately. I did. I did. This one I just wanted to show off. I actually just started recently getting into Jessica Jones's Spider Woman, and I thought this one was funny because it's got like she's feisting off with the with uh, just says werewolf, but on the cover it's got like the silver screen Frankenstein werewolf, and I think that's all. Oh, yeah, Bella Lugosi's vampire or Dracula. So I just thought that was fun. I was like, hey, let me check this out. 
yeah. and keep it in theme with monsters. Keeping in theme with monsters, we uh, had recently, before uh, Halloween, had picked up the Marvel Zombies vs. Ash, and so this is the continuation of it. This is, I don't remember, this is number four of five of Marvel Zombies. So, I actually thought we had these, and I remembered that I read it on my electronic app and not got the physical version, <laughs> so that was all excited. And then, uh, like I said, I am into Silk, and Silk actually got me interested in Jessica Jones, and so I, this is number one of Spider-Woman with Jessica Jones, or with Silk appearing on it. But what was cool about this one is Dennis Hopeless signed it. And Dennis Hopeless, he is very good friends, or enemy, frenemy, frenemies, <laughs> of uh, Colin Bunn, who actually lives in our area. And they have a fun little podcast called Missouri Swagger. Yes. Definitely give that a listen, because uh, they like to talk about breaking into the business of writing for mm -hmm. comics. But it was very cool to find something signed by him. We were lucky enough to meet him yes, at CaveCon. at CaveCon, and they were giving each other a hard time. Oh, and <laughs> if you haven't uh, checked out Missouri Swagger on YouTube, it's YouTube slash Missouri Swagger. That's the YouTube channel that I run with Dennis Hopeless, who on a recent episode told me he would be at his table here at the convention the entire time. So let me introduce you to Dennis. <laughs> Hi, this is Dennis Hopeless, the good half of Missouri Swagger. I want to clear the air that I'm at my table. I've been at my table for the last two hours way more than this guy. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Do you nerd? And on the back, it does to have its tell you of authenticity. that that is his signature. Yes. yes. That's I do believe recently that uh, Colin said that Hopeless was his kryptonite. <laughs> <laughs> so they have a good banter back and forth. They like to really razz each other. So. Anyway, and then just off of the, I love Jean Grey, or not Jean Grey, Phoenix is one of my favorites. And so this cover was kind of neat because it's Phoenix and then it looks like some form of symbiote down here with, so I don't know if it's actually Venom or just one of the symbiotes from his planet. And then to keep that going, there's Loki with a symbiote of some kind. Because so you cannot resist Loki. <laughs> I can't resist Loki. So, you know, whatevs. And then I love my Exiles because of Blink. I'm a huge Blink fan, so got another one of those to continue on my, to fill in some gaps, more gap filler inners. <laughs> we got Gwenpool. And then um, to go along, actually, to backtrack to Phoenix, I found this one and I had never heard of Phoenix and Spider-Man crossing over, but here we have Spider-Phoenix. So apparently he's a little... Uh, universe horror and wants to cross over with everybody. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> He's gonna just yeah, cross talk over about with the, everybody. Talk about crossing into the spider yep. verse. Jeez. Yep. And then, of course, my most recent obsession is Spider Gwen. I absolutely love her. And this is the beginning of Gwenum. So I picked up Gwenum number one and Gwenum. I don't know. This one's not numbered, but this is another part of the Gwenum. <laughs> I think there was a couple in the Gwenum series. So. I was very excited to find those. So, so yeah, it just goes to show uh, some very nice yes. finds. And something very cool about uh, one of the flea markets we venture to a lot is we've gotten to know the person that runs the booth. Uh -huh. And so even though we don't get to catch him there to make any deals, he actually keeps us in mind pretty well. Yeah. And he lets you know whenever he, uh, he does. Whenever has he some puts of the stuff that you like. The stuff I want, especially um, the fairy tales, grim fairy yes. tales. He's always texting and be like, hey, I put some new fairy tales in there. I'm like, sweet. So Yeah, something else that he has is, you know, ones like this, but let's not focus on stuff like that because, you know, that's that's a little... That's not appropriate. Different. It is inappropriate. <laughs> Miss Jackson, if you're nasty. Yeah. You know what is appropriate? <laughs> More video games. More video games! And I found just some 32X ones. We've got... 36 great holes. Who doesn't want 36? Okay, great we're holes? Yes. we got to get back onto the wholesome stuff. Here, <laughs> we got people. Metalhead and then Cosmic Carnage, and uh, I didn't like pick Carnage, up. like Symbiote Carnage. I don't think so, unfortunately. That would have been great. That would have been cool. Yeah, there you I go, have Marvel. Lots Your next of story, comic books on Cosmic the <laughs> Carnage. But uh, I typically don't see a lot of 32x games out in the wild, so even though they were cart only, I went for them. And mixed in was a. Deadly Moves Sega Genesis game, 
And, uh, you know, you know who had some deadly moves? Wolverine. Yes. <laughs> carnage. Speaking of. <laughs> Space carnage. Space carnage. <laughs> I don't know who had deadly moves. Who are you going for? Uh, you know, I was going for, uh, your, your lover boy from Dirty Dancing. Oh, Patrick Swayze. <laughs> He's dead. And my last find at a thrift store was, check this out. It is Pac-Man Christmas album. And... Oh, that cover looks great with the weird Pac-Man yeah. when they have the arms and legs and everything. Yeah. But uh, what's really funny is when you flip this thing over... It has nothing to do with Pac-Man. I'm pretty sure this was just some <laughs> typical album that they slapped a Pac cover on and hoped that it would sell a little better. It sold because that's why we bought it. That is true. Because so. even, even on here, it's... I don't know. It, it still says Pac-Man, but yeah... I, I feel no just a little bit there. duped. Because <laughs> I don't think we realized that until we got home. Would it be safe to say that you found the right stuff? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Show us the rat tail. Which one? The oh, braided gosh. one or the not so oh. braided one? <laughs> it's awful. <laughs> Just to make sure we are not flagged by uh, YouTube or anything for trying to play any of the music off of this. Sorry, guys. No Jingle Bell, Pac-Man Rock. I want to know why the ghosts are being so helpful. Because they're friendly ghosts. Well, the last thing I picked up to pop back to movies is I picked up... Oh, jeez. <laughs> Jekyll and Hyde, the musical starring David Hasselhoff. Oh, man. <laughs> Yeah, we haven't watched this yet. I don't know if we're going to be able to, but it was another one of those things where I just, I couldn't help myself. It was just hilarious, and I think it was a dollar. So, uh, you know, I'd buy that for a buck. Would you buy it for a buck? Is that the phrase? Would you buy that for a buck? Who knows? I bought this for a buck. <laughs> I don't know if I would have bought that for a dollar. <laughs> it's yeah, tell funny, because you... you've got to, I mean, like, some of the, the pictures on the back, though, it's like, oh... Okay. I tell you what, what do you think is going to be harder to watch? Go ahead and vote down below. And, <laughs> the and you'll alone. never you'll never find out because I don't know if we're going to watch these. That'd be a little rough. Anyway. And uh, just to round out our day out when we were hitting up flea markets oh, and, and everything, we did swing into GameStop just to kind of look around. And... You always have to let our presence be known in there so they oh, don't yeah. forget us. Exactly. The Westons. Uh, but it's always fun to uh, pop in, pick up some cheap games and stuff, you know, kind of fill those libraries, especially with things like the Wii. I did go ahead and pay about nine bucks for uh, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Echoes of Time. Now, I had a lot of fun with the GameCube Crystal Chronicles game, despite the fact that you had to carry that stupid chalice around. It was annoying. It was a bad mechanic. So I'm hoping that this one fares a little bit better. It's very cutesy looking. It is, and it's got your, your Moogle on the back. I like Moogles. So, so that's always fun. And then just because they were so cheap, I mean, come on, two bucks. Hey, let's, let's be... Moogle dabbing? Yes. I'm pretty sure this Moogle is dabbing on the back. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, let's be some real hero firefighters, and let's play some medieval games! These games are probably awful, but they were only $2. And let's see. Uh, I want my $2! Booklet for the firefighter. Oh, this, got, for oh, medieval this is games. a blockbuster. Oh my gosh. This one is complete, but it's a blockbuster. Oh, and I tell you what that thing is not going to come off. Have you ever tried to pull that Blockbuster sticker off of a disc? doesn't work out very well. If if you're not pulling so hard that you just end up cracking the disc or anything, it rips like the whole disc label yeah. off. So, uh, you just so, yeah. gotta leave that video game rental shame I guess so. Alright, so guys, you are going to have to let us know did I get nothing but junk and she picked up some good stuff? She seems to think so. <laughs> Come on, who doesn't want to watch David Hasselhoff? <laughs> I'm serious. I know I don't want to watch this. Especially, like, I mean, this chick right here. I mean, if we're going to go back to the not appropriate looking stuff on there. Well, nerdlings, 
definitely leave some comments down below <laughs> on any of this stuff. We're all over the place with this. We and, were. Uh, we were um, ADD with our pickups. Apparently. <laughs> and that's what happens when you're cooped up for a while and you get out and you're like, buy all the things. So leave some comments, <laughs> drop a like if you happen to like it. And if you like seeing weird stuff like this, we will not shortchange you at all. No. So go ahead and subscribe and stick around. And we do have a bell for notifications Ooh. to let you know we got some more weird stuff. Yeah. And don't forget to like us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for those closer upper pictures to let you know if YouTube has dropped a video when they haven't let you know that we have dropped a video and to know what we're doing out about in the real world. Because we do go out and about in the real world. <laughs> all right, nerdlings. Well, uh, definitely check out those social medias because we will let you know when the movie party double feature is happening for Mortal Kombat, the animated video, and Jekyll and Hyde, David Hassel. There will be props. Oh, gosh. This already hurts. <laughs> Bye, nerdlings. See you, nerdlings. Oh, classy. Easy Riders from the 70s. Actually, these are probably like... For these like millions of dollars, I'm just coming through them, ignoring them. Wow. Okay, let's try this again. Take two. Use take two.